Hey guys, it's Liat and Casey, and we are here with episode 153. Casey? All right. I don't really have one, so I'm hoping to get a little bit of help from our guest and you and maybe even Alan, but today we're talking about body modification. So I was thinking body modification does not come for free. Okay. Right? One, five, three, tattoo me. Okay. All right. Or Botox or I had a dream. I had a dream last night that I, I literally got a full arm sleeve. Yes. And, but the worst part was when they were done, I asked for like flowers and I like wasn't, they like kept giving me like some kind of like sleeping med. So I would like, that sounds not great. Attention. And then the whole arm was like this like goblin with like a, a Google map. And then it was like random. Where like, was the location? What do you, I don't know. But it was also like a wonton cookie. Like it was so horrible. I feel like that's the kind of shit you would put on yourself. I probably would. I was like, and then they were like, it's $1,900. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> like what happened to my arm? It was bad. So this is perfect for play into what we're talking about today, everyone. Yep, it is. So we use that. So... Episode 153, Modification Doesn't Come for Free, or Tattoo, tattoo me. me. All right. This is actually coming full circle, because I literally think you talk about your mm-hmm. New Hampshire <laughs> tattoo on episode one. So we're circling back. <laughs> yep. Uh, today, we're in the office, and we're talking like it's a guest, but this is something that, we, that we've said before. We've had this person on before. This person works with us every single day. Mm-hmm. And so- It's kind of like office, office talk. talk. Jinx. You owe me a Coke Coke. Zero. Punch buggy, no take backs. So, (laughs) okay. So you guys know Nicole. Nicole works with us. Nicole has a lot of swag. Nicole is a um, BCBA. That's the most boring part about her. She also writes uh, (laughs) a lot of She's a professor of statistics, which is the coolest part. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Because who likes that? She writes all of our mock exams. Mm -hmm. She loves Vera Bradley. <laughs> she loves vests. She yes. loves vests. She loves shackets with moose on them, like today, which like today. is very moosey. She's throwing it back today. She's wearing old school clog Birkenstocks. Yes. And with socks, by the way. Uh, C-3PO socks. What is a C-3PO? That's good. Star Wars. Oh, oh. I thought you were talking about like carbon monoxide or something. Uh, <laughs> like, aren't you anti that? Yeah. Don't. We're not going to talk about it. Oh, she, uh, also, something else about her. She is nervous about microwaves. She, like, leaves the room when a microwave is near. Or if a package comes in and she doesn't know where it was sent from. Like, Leah opened one yesterday. It turned out to be coffee. Nicole <laughs> runs to, like, the other <laughs> corner past me and pushes by me. She didn't even see me. So now you're, like, putting me on blast. I know. I was like, where are you what going? the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so Nicole's pretty fucking badass. And yep. she makes us want to be more badass. Hence a surprise I have for you guys today. Oh, boy. but first, but first, and this actually, this review came in after an episode with Nicole. Ooh, um, and there's a backstory I'll tell you later. But the review is from BLT0957, vegan lettuce tomato. <laughs> you know yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, BLTs are delish. I hate tomatoes. Sneaker heads, standing here wearing off white sneakers and just listen to your sneakerhead podcast, and I love you, betches. You have an energy that you don't come across often. I want to be a part of this. The energy is contagious. Love you, girls. Let's hang. L O L. Such a good review. And thank you for listening in. I do not believe this person is in the field, which makes it even cooler that they listened. Yeah. Oh, they're in the field. They're me. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, when I did this, I thought he visited. But he, he said like, he would do it. it. I asked that. Okay, so I was helping um, Kobe's nanny. She was, like, looking to get a car, so I was trying to help her, like, sign for whatever. And so that cool guy, Keith, came to the office. Yeah, and his wife. Uh-huh. Up. And he had, like, those, like, six sneakers on. And I was yep. like, dude, you got to listen to our podcast. And we, like, went to be friends with them, whatever. And I was like, leave he a review. He actually had on off-white sneakers. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, leave a review. And he was like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll listen. But, like, how many people say that? And I was like, you know what? Just give me your phone. What do I want someone to say? And 
I hope you guys feel bad for us. That's the point. Is that it's not <laughs> to the point that we're having to steal people's phones no. to leave reviews. So no, we had a lot. Thank you to the people that um my Instagram story. We got like a bunch of new reviews. No, I'm kidding. I have not been able to steal over a thousand phones. Yeah. That was just that one. But it was uh-huh. I, I thought No, it was but cool. I think he actually listened to the episode and he did. He thought it was really cool that we were able to talk about sneakers, but also tie it into science. And he had also been a behavior therapist. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Which was really and cool. he had opened his own center right. at one point. So yeah. that was that was really cool too. And he was kinda hot. Very hot. No, Old man guys, hot. this is where I'm going to have the turn and say he reminded <laughs> me of my dad, which is weird, and I cannot get on board with that. Mm. Casey was on board. I can. <laughs> yeah, I can. Well, <laughs> I will introduce you to my dad next time he visits. No, you know? so, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Nicole, I don't want to steal your dad. I'm married. <laughs> I'm married to my rock. <laughs> okay, so what Let's, are we talking about today? We're outnumbered here. By what? Married people. Yes. I support. I, su- single, I support it. All the single ladies. I, look, I support it. All right. So, <laughs> body modification. Mm-hmm. Yes. I I actually was super stoked when you guys uh, brought this topic to me because obviously I have a lot of body modification going on. Um, yeah, Nicole like literally has like a face full of filler and Botox. Oh yes, not <laughs> that kind. Well, I'm glad you brought that up too because like when we say body modification, it really is any type of change that has happened to your appearance that's not natural, right? So right. that's operational definition. That is about. so yeah. Let's make a solid operational definition. It would be anything that has changed the appearance of your body, including the changing of the shape, size, color, or texture of a body part in some way. This includes reconstructing or reshaping injured or damaged body parts, areas that, you know. So, like, me losing my fingers is body mod? Well, that would be a natural loss. If you rebuild it. No, honey, according to your definition, reshaping injured or damaged body parts. Yeah. So, your fingers were damaged. Yeah, they were damaged, so it doesn't fall into that. But if you reshape the damaged body part, then. Well, she did. You got those fingers made. No, that was. That was like a, I mean, a prosthetic. You, so, like, remember how you were getting those appointments to have like fat put on your fingers? Oh, that would yes, be body yes, modification. yes. Yeah, I was getting. They were gonna take that from like another part of your body. I lost mo for that because it got summer and it was hot. But I'm sure I'll be back in that office. They were right. gonna like put fat on my fingertips, not to like try make my fingers longer, guys, but to try give it warmth. Right. So if you were to do that, that would be reshaping an injured body part. You know. Since I've been, like, renovating my house, I learned about this thing called, like, ugly money. Like, you put money into, like, your, like, like your plumbing system is broken. That's, mm-hmm. like, ugly money. Like, it's not going to show to anyone that you've got right. to, like, do anything cool. Yeah. That'd be, like, body mod, like, ugly mm-hmm. money, body mod that I'm, like, just trying to get warm to my fingers, yeah. not actually, like, make my fingers look full again. Right. I have a ugly, ugly money body, body mod, too, that most people don't know about. It's my uh, ACL Whoa. and MCL. Uh, that was reconstructed by a piece of my patella tendon oh. uh, because I had absolutely shredded it playing rugby. And um, wow, literally my bones weren't held together by anything other than like a small tangled t- tendon. So I actually had to have that part of my knee reconstructed with another part of my body, uh, which would ugly classify money. as ugly money body mod. Yeah. So I almost had that. to have that done, but my fistula healed. But they were going to take something from my other body and do a flap in my butthole and make like a she's not getting i swear I'm serious. wait <laughs> wait would you have got your butthole nicer looking while you were at it do you think <laughs> i don't know what time it out. looks like time out i need i do a send me a picture when you have that issue <laughs> <laughs> i need a definition of what's happening because i was not expecting butthole to come from this yeah. story so so what? um if anyone out there i'm in a big support group so i know there's someone out there also that has had a fistula and my fistula was in my asshole. It's got it from getting a fist in her asshole. No, I did not. <laughs> That's I get the name I fistula. Like, I was like, I've heard of a fistula, but I've never, I didn't think you were going asshole. No, so no, I, I got a fistula. So basically what happened was um, I also have like irritable bowel syndrome, which I thought I had Crohn's, but I don't. I still think I do. And the doctor just is lying to me, but whatever. It's hereditary runs my family. I they don't totally, want you knowing. Totally. Yeah. I spent $5,000 in this surgery. <laughs> they told oh. me I don't have it. Anyways, so I developed a fistula. It was very uncomfortable. Leah would know that every morning I'd have to sit in the bathtub for hours, drain it. Uh, gross. Yuck. I know. T- TMI. But TMI. I went to the doctor and they put a drain in, a seton, 
um, for education. It's just hashtag like, Seton, hashtag Seton sisters, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag any Seton hashtag sisters colon rectal surgeon. <laughs> uh, but they put it looks. It's literally like a tiny elastic. And it goes into the fistula uh, in your butthole and then out. And it allows for drainage naturally. Now, the odds, 50% of fistulas do not ever heal in your entire lifetime. And you have to have multiple cetons. Um, And then the next surgery is called like a lift. And it's a reconstruction of your butthole, which could result in having an ostomy bag, which we've done a Mm. podcast about. So I was living that life for like two years. And um, one day I was like, where is it? It fell out, which means my body naturally healed and it pushed the seton out. So I didn't have to have any more. And I've been fistula free for almost a year now. That's awesome. Mazel tov. (laughs) Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers, real. Cheers Um, to But no ugly money spent on body money because it just naturally healed. So there's some things that can heal naturally. See, I thought we were just going to talk about filler all day. So this is cool. Yeah, Yeah, no, that's fine. So like, yeah, it's a big behavioral definition and it fits tons of things. But the idea is that you've done something to alter the appearance of your body. Um. But today we kind of chose like more like we chose yeah. a few specific body mods. But now that we know that it's all these different things, yeah, um, we could go deeper into Casey's bottle. But I don't want to cause <laughs> another fistula. Yeah, no, so. I, Casey does <laughs> have free. some, you know, outward appearing body mod. I her do. tattoos. She now has a piercing. Piercing. Ah, my included. nose piercing. Yeah. Casey like just had a random weekend by herself. I had a mini life crisis. I think it was literally like a Saturday morning. Saturday or- morning, I woke up and I was like. I want to get in my ear pierced, right? I want to go to this place called Studs. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't really, like, I like just having one ear. I'm good. I had that top one done. It pushed it out. Yes. My body didn't like it. Pushing everything out. Cetons, <laughs> earrings. So I went and I was like, I used to have my nose pierced when I was in my 20s. I loved it. So I got my nose pierced and I love it. She's, I also love my nose piercing. I, I got I, a lot going on. I, I want to tell you, I also love both your nose piercings and you want one. I, Why don't you get one? Okay, so everyone, you need to know that yeah. this past weekend I went to when we were young. When we were young, which was a music festival in Vegas, and it was Good Charlotte, Simple Plan, Avril Lavigne, Blink One Eighty Two, Blink One Eighty Two, Offspring, a surprise no guest, effects. Lil Wayne, <laughs> surprise guest, Lil Wayne. Okay, easy. <laughs> and I took very like I mean every person at this concert. This was the best part about it. It was 50,000 people, like, got the memo about the dress code. Yeah. Okay? They heard the assignment. Yeah, like, the assignment was very Understood. clear. Like, you need to be having your Vans on, your your chucks, your, like, studded belt, and... Studded jacket. Studded um, jacket. Fishnets. I, fishnets. Butthole open. Jinkos. That lady, that yeah. girl. That I sent Casey a picture of someone's butt. It was out. And <laughs> everyone got the memo. And so I decided to, like, lean in hard. Tattoo sleeves. Yep. I wait. Did you get a tattoo? Is that the surprise? No. So okay. Oh boy. Oh my god! I'm freaking. Oh boy. I'm glad we have this. Did you get your camera. belly button pierced? Oh, look at the sleeve. Ah! Oh my god. Okay. okay. I can dig this. Wait. And it's color. <laughs> it's this tribal into Hawaiian into like a koi fish. Listen. So that's because I kind of like did it. Up- on myself this morning <laughs> and it like went this direction so then i had to add another like <laughs> who's that mike tyson like ah, over here. yes it's very tribal <laughs> and that comes from okay i'm glad that we're we're diving into this because like the number one or Wait, i so guess you, it's not the number you one body you know mod today one. huh but um <laughs> one of the most popular body modifications is tattoos yep. and i mean i have them shout out to my mom who um thought that i would never become a professional because i have like a full sleeve see that's what right i need one this is this is this is not your kind but yours looks like so pussycat next to mine (laughs) oh yeah totally i I like tattoos when they fade when they're like fresh it's like i actually like the fresh oh i like faded oh i like like this one my front one still isn't fully faded it's like a year and a half old i love it like fresh 10 years old no, looking fresh is weird because it doesn't look fresh and you look like you just got it done, right? You're not in the game. You're a noob. Dude, okay, so anyways, so at the concert, I had this sleeve on. I've never felt cooler. I had this, like, double nose ring. So I cool. was, like, peeking. Mm-hmm. The point is that I was peeking. 
And I, when I put the sleeve on, that's why I got another one for today's episode because it got a little ruined. And that's why you couldn't I, answer I, the phone call. You were putting on it. This is why she's so busy this morning. <laughs> and I'm like, sense. I'm having a rough morning. Can I <laughs> call you later? <laughs> I'm having a rough Exactly. So, oh, so at the concert, I'm like, we put it on. And then, like, after the concert, I go home, I'm like, getting ready to shower. And I look at myself in the mirror naked. You and felt I'm so like, cool. I was like, is this what it feels like to feel, like, so badass? Like, you wake up like this. And the next morning, I woke up. Like, in I look like this forever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. So that's, like, one of the things, like the function of getting tattooed so just some easy stats out there because i love stats Mm -hmm. um 32 percent of adults have tattoos 32 percent of all adults have tattoos it's pretty cool 22 percent out of that 32 have more than one day it is super so like trust me i get it okay so for me the function can i tell you yeah let's talk about function it's not about for me, it's not about like the look or the attention or any of that. It's literally sensory. It feels so good. Okay. When that needle goes in, I am like, I my body vibrates. <laughs> Do you see Leot's face? She doesn't understand because no. she's never had one. I think a common misconception is that it's super painful. Oh, and there's no. certain areas. Yes, that my ribs. I have my whole my ribs, ribs done. are done too. And that they, and was like full. Uh, every reflex, even the healing, the sweating, of the ribs. yes, oh. everything hurts. Neck hurt like crazy but i've learned where it doesn't hurt which is the arms, arms don't hurt um my thigh, thigh. kind of hurt that kind of hurt um but i could handle it what about your butt my butt didn't hurt at all because there's so much fat there that's yeah. that's where casey has the tattoo the yeah think about like when you have cushion one. live for your day my stomach was really weird i have my under ribs here under boob yeah under boob hurts yeah that but also right though i will say that <laughs> even though it hurt the attention of the tattoo guy yeah. seeing my boob i was like Ah, check it out. <laughs> that is so Casey. <laughs> I know. Casey, like, didn't even want a boob tattoo, but she's like, he's hot. I can so imagine. Let him. Yeah. So, uh, that's and you know what it is? It I says, never a failure, always a lesson. And it was right after my divorce. Oh, oh snap. Don't sis. you like that? That's why I did this. I was like, I'm going to do this. I love <laughs> lotus flowers. Super cute. Oh, this. Yes. I always love Mike Tyson. Huge inspo in my life. That's why I put this one right over here. Um, I can't even see the top. Um, you know, everyone koi fish, but koi fish are expensive. If you have koi fish at your house, you know you're big ballin' and you've kept them alive. It also shows you're a good caretaker, oh, which I am. Roses, because um, my- I sent you roses for your birthday. Yeah, and when I was like 16, I got asked to homecoming with roses from my ex. Um, <laughs> and this one, this is a compass, because like, always remember where you go. Like, uh-huh. Gotta find get your, your And if yeah. I learned from your mom and you that if you're Jewish- you was face, face east. east towards Jerusalem. Exactly. So that's definitely why your compass Where's it is pointing? Pointing north. <laughs> Southwest. <laughs> South- yeah, I love Southwest Airlines, too, because you get to choose your own seat. I cannot. I don't even actually want to put the Southwest logo, so I just like, like put a compass. <laughs> you know, that's what I love about that, too, is because you can do really deep stuff. Like me, like every single part of me is on here, <laughs> represented in my arm. Um, I have a swallow on my arm. <laughs> That, like, you can't even <laughs> tell people why. <laughs> Yikes. No, I have the swallow because... Don't change it now, bitch. Because... When I first met you, you told me why you got it. <laughs> no, because it means the sailors, when they come home, if they saw the swallow, it meant that they were home. I thought you were going to go really dirty with this. Dude, that say... is the truth of it. <laughs> okay. You okay. said that. Don't try, like, classify, classify yourself now. Well, that's the thing. So, so like... It, that was not the reason. Anyone... <laughs> She literally told me one time, she's like, because I knew I was so good at <laughs> getting swallow tattoos. I mean, okay, so most people, oh, most God. people, bless her soul, when they <laughs> choose the tattoos that they want, they say, well, 69% of folks say they want to remember or honor someone or something. Yeah. 47% say they want to make a statement about what they believe, maybe swallowing is what she believed at that time. And 32% <laughs> said, that they have tattoos to enhance their own personal appearance. So possible functions range, including enhancing physical appearance, <laughs> expressing individuality, marking milestones, celebrating life achievements, and honoring loved ones. Um, like Danielle has a Cooper book tattooed on her. Yeah, that was an achievement. That's an she achievement. The best. Yeah. So That's huge. Yeah. Um, are common functions like attention? You want others to notice you. 
or not notice a deformity you might have. So like I know some people like who have nipples. been in accidents. Okay, and so stuff. let's talk about that. Yeah. And this is something I've never shared. Um and I haven't done it yet because I had to wait a while for it to heal. But when I was in college, I attempted suicide. And this is trigger warning. Ooh, this um, is heavy. Yeah. And I cut my wrist open mm-hmm. uh, really bad. Oh, I remember you telling me this. And I had to have like 30 stitches inside, outside, like couldn't move my hand, tore tendons. Like I had to like take a semester off. Um, they made me go to counseling. It was just. So I um, lied. Yeah. I mean, I lied and said that I fell on a bottle, but the yeah. way and they found the knife and there was blood everywhere. It was in my sorority. It was so embarrassing. But anyways, oh, it was so um I'm and so it, happy you're okay. But anyways, I have a really big scar here. And I have other ones from like little tiny, like I was a cutter. That is, you know, I've never really shared that on this. Ditto. Same. I've never shared. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I yeah. oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry right now. Yeah. Um it feels like an escape. It that is an function. escape. I needed to feel something harder than the pain I was feeling inside. Yeah. And it was something that I look back now and I'm like, when I do feel that dark place, I'm like, I don't even know how I did that. But I was, it felt so good. And so I want to get a tattoo to memorialize that like it's finally healed enough because you don't want a tattoo over a scar right. tissue. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you can still see it. And you can see all the little stitches that go in these? there. No, this big one. Yeah, but, but what are these? Other cuts. Yeah, those are just attempts. Those know? are like those little. Are this was cutting. the real one. Yep. Oh, you cut it right across this artery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, don't know. I know. Okay. Stop. So okay. No, sorry. I get trigger warning. No, trigger warning. Tr- I think you're supposed to say the trigger before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just no. Yeah. I'm so happy you're okay, and I, no, I know. also just get so I get so weak at the yeah. Out of. I mean, it was something that like I didn't mean. I don't think I was attempting to do it so deep, but the knife must have just been sharper than my other ones, and. When I did it, I realized, like, I don't want to die. Holy right. shit. Like, yeah. someone called the ambulance. Like, I'm bleeding out, literally. Like, and it was, you know, it was a lot of shame and embarrassment because everyone knew. And and a lot of people don't understand. Like, no. when, when you're coming from a dark like, place you're crazy. like that, I'm like, no. you have so much inner turmoil and yeah. such heavy feelings inside that you want to feel something physical to kind of compete with that pain. Yeah. Like, and- release. It's, it's almost like a shift in your pain. Yeah. I'm tired of feeling pain inside. Yep. Let me feel physical pain outside. Like, I can handle physical... You right? know how you always say that, like, sometimes, like, physical pain is easier to handle than, like, mental oh, emotional I still pain. stand by that. I yeah. Before I was diagnosed with lupus mm-hmm. and had my fingers literally freeze off, mm-hmm. I've been in dark places before, and I said, I would rather have the worst physical pain in the entire world than any yeah. mental pain or have my brain not on my side. And... Then I got diagnosed with lupus and literally lived in, I'd probably say, one of the most physically painful scenarios of watching your fingers die on you. Mm -hmm. And I still stand strong that I'd rather, I mean, God, please, I don't ever want that happening to me again. But also, I like, so, but yeah, like, so it's like a weird DRA. Also, but just anyone listening, this is not a good opportunity, I think, as well. If anyone is in pain or hurting, yeah, here's two amazing permanent product group that <laughs> we like, look, okay. look where you are now <laughs> and life brought us together i know i think yeah. that there's so much that yeah. nicole and i have in common um from trauma <laughs> and when we talk we're like you too yeah. Wait, you but, too oh, I, I will also say that you know casey and i um have come a long way mm-hmm. and i love we, seeing it yeah yeah you know we're medicated we talk to people yep um we know our triggers and um We've we've come a long way and gotten the help that we need at, to be successful. Totally. So if you're in a dark place, still right now, getting help. Here I am. Like therapy. yeah, <laughs> we're still we're still figuring it out. We're still using our resources, and uh, I want to encourage you all to um, just be in touch with the people around you. Seek help. Yeah. Um, do not be ashamed. Absolutely. To get that help, mm-hmm. um, if you need it, getting help is cool. Yeah. Anyway, so but help. and tattoos, <laughs> yeah, tattoos are so that's what I want to do. And then you can help it. I want to yeah. plan something cool for this arm. I love it. Yeah, I love okay. it. Love it. Love it. But I would say that falls more into like an escape function, right? totally, because um, you want to escape the people and the feelings and the places that you're around, mm-hmm. um, and especially on the on the feeling side, heavy on the feeling side. Um, I hear so many people like jokingly say like. 
um, I I need a tattoo piercing or to dye my or bangs, hair, bangs. right? Or bang, <laughs> just because like to survive this mental health crisis I'm going through, you know? Like, uh-huh. Oh, every time I go through something, I do some body modification. It's like escape. So well, this day. is a this is a DRA. This is a more appropriate alternative of getting your nose pierced. Right, nose pierced. Cutting because like you felt something that day. Yeah. Right, and so like, that's what I'm saying, cutting was and, an and imagine like, but it's not as appropriate. Yeah. I've been in dark places since I've been here. Like I could have many times gone back to that same replacement behavior, which is harmful. Mm -hmm. And so a tattoo or a piercing is that kind of like that pain that replaces the feeling of the internal pain. Dude, just ask me. I'll punch you in the face. (laughs) I got your back. I think that's also why. Also, I do a lot of arm twisting. I do a lot of sensory. Like I love an Indian sunburn. Like if someone takes my arm, I'm like, (gasps) I want an Indian sunburn. Ah, I'll give you one. I just asked. <laughs> no, I was I was yeah. sick at that shit in third grade. I think that's why I went for the harder sports. Like, I'll yeah. eat an elbow. Like, playing rugby, you have no gear. Oh, basketball? I was the, like, the rough. Oh, yeah. I got in, like, fights. I got kicked off teams. I would be, like, pulling hair. Just, that is so heavy <laughs> on, like, you ratchet chicks. Yeah, you ratchet, ratchet a sheltered seen. sheltered chick oh my god <laughs> you guys should hear our actual office talk yesterday <laughs> this is but kind of it no, this yeah. is it yeah but i mean like outside people look again you would think like oh my gosh she's doing that for attention but like no, no. she's doing that to escape her inner feelings and yeah. that's why like behavior is so complex and you really have to get at the core of the correct function and- of behavior so that's why like i think about our clients all the time is that hey I'm eating a bone. The mic. She's eating a bone. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry, Mabel's here, guys. My new pup. She's like my. I was also emotional, a body mod, emotional support animal. <laughs> um, like many things I do, that I'm like, wow, that's probably why they're, you know, we call it stimming or whatever. Mm-hmm. Feels so good. So like, I'll twist my ring really hard, and I do that a lot. I will do things like rocking, or you know, drinking a lot of water like that, or going to the bathroom a lot. They're like almost escape maintain behaviors even in therapy like i was do you go to the bathroom mid-session no no i didn't go to the bathroom but i drink a ton of water like and i realized i was counting the like, irt between my water because i could see tula's clock oh yeah and so i was like oh my god i've probably taken a sip every 30 seconds yeah I guess slow and down. it's almost yeah. like it pauses me to have listening because like tula said i was like i just don't have any energy to give she's like oh you have a lot of energy, Casey. <laughs> I'm like, do I? She's like, yeah. So anyways, yeah. So we all have this. And so I think of our clients and I think of what makes them feel good that might look weird or different mm-hmm. to us and not stopping them from doing those things, allowing them to, you know, we think, oh, no, don't, don't um, like wave your hands. Don't flap your hands. Right. Not appropriate. Like uh, let them do what they need to do yeah. if that's calming them. I'm glad we're moving more towards uh, acceptance of those yeah. types of things. Same. Um, because it used to be like target those things heavily, but I know now in the field, and I regret there's more movement towards that. I got a client loved like the flapping and jumping mm-hmm. in public. And I would always say to him, and I like regret it now. Like when we go into like a Walmart or like put your hands in your pocket, put your hands in your pocket. And I'm like, oh, like I'm literally for- here. Yeah, or- here I am, Indian sunburning myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Or like hands on the cart. Like I'd make them like yeah. do an incompatible behavior. Like you're gonna push the cart so you don't engage in those behaviors. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I never want to be that therapist again. I mean, and that's the thing. Like we're all gonna make hiccups and mistakes, but I think it's recognizing, like, mm-hmm. shit, I shouldn't have done that. I feel so terrible for doing that. Moving forward. Yeah, I'm going to hold myself accountable and do better. And teach um, others. like, and, and teach others that, that that's okay, right? Can I circle back to the tattoos? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. And the, and the pod. I hate to pull a Casey. Uh-huh. <laughs> and bring us back <laughs> on to, topic. Uh, but something interesting also that you had written about here is, yeah. you know, we talk about selectionism and ontogeny versus phylogeny. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because a lot of ontogeny, we know things that are learned. Yeah. So, like, in my family, growing up in a Jewish family, mm-hmm. like a religious observant family, yep. like there is not a tattoo in sight. Right. Like anyone. Like, in fact, I was laughing with my friend the other day. I was like, imagine like I went with this sleeve as a tattoo because we both like grew up in a religious household and my fake sleeve. Mm-hmm. 
I'm like, imagine I went to like a synagogue event, like everyone would be like, no, it's nice. And then after they'd be like, what did she do? Yeah, you know? Exactly. Um, and so like to me it's like foreign mm-hmm. seeing that. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and but like if you grow up and you like you know, like you have a family that you saw, like, oh yeah, everyone got tattoos to memorialize different things. Like yeah. tattoos were cool. It was artsy, like it was this. Yeah, my mom and dad both had tattoos of me and my sister on their bodies. Like my name like my mom had the world and then my name over it and Caitlin's name under it. My dad had like some kind of wings with our names in it. Like yeah. Definitely. My dad um had a heart tattoo on his right arm with my name and cursive in the middle. Uh and then he had this like jaguar or panther on his leg. Um, but it was only those two, but I feel like ontogeny for me was like seeing those two and knowing that that was okay. Yeah. So that I could then go and get tattoos myself. I just, I now have significantly more tattoos than he does. Mm -hmm. Um, he has gotten more, but like not, he doesn't have a full sleeve or anything like that. So I think in my family, I know, (laughs) I think in my family, I think, um, one of my cousins has a full sleeve, but people have like small ones mm-hmm. like small things so it, it is interesting but like um from a phylogeny perspective right and that's talking about like survival of the fittest um that darwinism stuff right things that help um, people survive yeah i think the most interesting thing that happens when you get tattoos and this is like a hot topic debate of like so there's a statistics right um 38% of women have at least one tattoo compared to 27% of males, right? So only 27% of males have at least one tattoo. 38% of women have at least one tattoo, which means that we have more, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but from a phylogeny perspective, like some males don't want to mate with a woman who has tattoos, right? And it could be back to their own um, ontogeny of like, what they grew up in maybe they're religious maybe they feel like their wife shouldn't have or they feel like it could like affect the health of their right like if they're like disturbing their physical body in some sense i was watching um the newest uh desperate housewives okay and i can't remember her name anyways there was like a clip of like coming soon and she has five tattoos and her husband didn't even know like, he thought she had two. Mm-hmm. And when they were sitting there in this interview, she's like, no, I have five. And she was showing him. And she's like, A, like, he's clearly not looking at my body anymore because you would know. And then he was like, no, no more tattoos. And she was like, it's not your choice. Right. It's not your body. And he's like, no, I don't like, I did not mm-hmm. like them. And she's like, you didn't even know how many I had to begin with. But again, the husband was like, he did not like them. He did not want more. And she was saying. So, but that would be like offer and wise, no? Yeah. That it one. could be, but I think, but like dating back, because a lot of it does go to reproduction, right? Right. And that's it's what like I was getting. This like person putting selection. poison, yeah, poison in their body, like which is, might affect their like reproduction ability. Oh, is that why I can't have kids? No way, dude. <laughs> <I'm joking>. <laughs> Tattoos. <laughs> no, it's Matt's sperm. It's fine. <laughs> Hashtag not my problem. Not my fault. <laughs> not my problem. Not my fault. Did I do that? <laughs> but I like where you were going with like the control because. With body modification, there is a free will versus self control mm-hmm. um, component. So, like, when we talk about free will, it's the general mm-hmm. idea that humans have their own ability to engage in their own choices, determine their own fate, right? Like, yes. Every time I got a tattoo, it was definitely my choice. Nobody coerced me into it. Nobody forced me to do it. It was, it was what I wanted to do, right? Um, and that leads to, like, when it comes to like body mod there is a perceived loss of control that occurs which then has that person seek control and make that controlling choice mm. so um during like a mental health breakdown where things seem like chaos and out of control and you can't control everything that's when you want to make that controlled yes. choice of getting the bangs dyeing your hair getting a mm-hmm. tattoo getting a piercing there's just too much that you can't control in that moment, so you make a choice that you can control. Yeah, That's really interesting. Um, also, I could add in something here. Sure, go for we it. talk about ontology, phylogeny. I could talk about also cultural selectionism, mm-hmm. um, which I watch a lot of like random um, documentaries on YouTube and stuff, and I love watching about these like forgotten tribes. 
And the one tribe, ugh, I wish I had the name right now, but basically what they do is like they stick a big like gauge in, in their, their bottom yeah, lip. Yeah, yeah. It's like one of the forgotten tribes in Africa somewhere. I want a tattoo there. I'm glad you talked about gauges because I also have gauges. Uh-huh. I, I I don't know. Honestly, I've tried to like look at my own function of behavior, but that is also body modification. Yeah, but you also like like, I think you like individualization as well. Yes. So, but really like it was a sign that like, first of all, you could also use these different body modifications either so like culturally like you fit into our tribe you have Mm -hmm. like you've done you've done the work you've been pledged into our tribe whatever it is yeah like you fit in with us you're part of the or if you're in a gang potentially and it's like we all have the matching or like Samoans exactly tattoos Mm -hmm. exactly big milestones in their lives it's cultural um even some of their women have like special face tattoos that they choose and they have like a big ceremony and they they well they do it old school though like the ding, ding, scarring ding, ding. yeah it's uh, not scarring but like with a single what about like those frats in university who like Ooh, branding yikes i mean it's the same cultural like you like, fit in with us exactly like if you watch yellowstone you get that brand you're in and you're untouchable but, um... but with that but they were also using it i noticed as like an SDS Delta, like to discriminate. It's like, you're married. Yep. You now have the, or the stretch neck potentially, mm-hmm. or like, you know, what, until you could stretch your neck out. Mm-hmm. That's a different tribe that I watched about. Yes, but they do. They add rings to stretch the neck. So I've never told any of you guys this. Oh, either. I'm ready. You stretched your neck? <laughs> no, no, I'm getting, like a, going I'm getting with a branding. <laughs> no. Maybe. Uh, Matt and I, when we first got married, we tattooed our wedding bands on our hand. Have you always had that? Mm-hmm. I've never seen that. I know. He has a big one. Like you a, keep it hidden? I mean, I just like wearing my ring, but we got it so that like we'd always have it. And he has like, you. his is like very clear. I mean, oh, it's like a big gee. band. I got like this very tiny line, but I've had it since we got married. So you guys know me and attachment, right? Yeah. It's like a whole thing. Same. <laughs> um, I'm obsessed with marriage. I really wanted to get mm-hmm. that and then a j for my husband's initial Mm -hmm. and he was just hands down like no nicole that is too much it's unhealthy but i want it so bad he's like secure attachment matt and i are both like anxious i know me too no i know like like, i love i I love the feeling of just like matt's never had a tattoo uh ever and that's so big guys and so it was big and he well he always we only never got him a ring he would wear like these like rubber things because he works with his hands and um Wait, you've always had that on? I've always had it. Dude, I love it. Super jealous. It's just one single little line. I mean, I do wow. have free will. I know right? you can do it on your own. I can still go and do it. But I, I wear my ring because I love my ring. So, yeah. um, but if I ever take my ring off, which I can't get it off because my fingers are too fat. Um, if I did, <laughs> um, I would have still this reminder that like, and it's not something that I would ever even want to get rid of if Matt and I didn't work out. It's like that like, does it go all the way around no they won't go all the way around because this part yeah this here. part fades so oh. no it's just like a very simple line i love it yeah wow that hurt <laughs> no i mean hurt feels good to me so well i feel like this goes back to another yeah. really good topic impulsivity versus self-control <laughs> totally. right like <laughs> choosing the more immediate <laughs> reinforcer oh. rather than the larger delayed reinforcer mm-hmm. If you choose the more immediate reinforcer, that would be impulsivity. If you choose the larger delayed reinforcer, that would be self-control. Um, yeah. Or, getting... or it could be the larger reinforcer, like the beautiful photo later on, even though you're in pain immediately. Yeah. If you don't like. Or can just like a it, successful can you believe marriage that you didn't know rather that than a tattoo. You, you, know? you never knew that. No. That was like a big. That like really is like we got to work all our shit out. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> I love it. Like too. I would make that impulsive choice of getting that tattoo rather than seeing the delayed reinforcer yeah. of being together for fifty years. Yeah. Like obviously that's beautiful, but like for me in the moment, I need that reinforcer. Well, I just now. think personally there's nothing that because like I never like there's nothing I could think of enough that you'd want, I'd want your tattoo. Body. Right. Kobe. I love him, but no. He's she's gonna pee on my rug. Mm-mm. I feel it. But you know, excited. I think it goes back to personal MOs, right? Because like 
Casey and I have a history of being abandoned. Um, so you want things that are like permanent. Like super, super big trauma with our moms. Um, so like we've been left, we've been abandoned. Um, we have a greater motivation of having that security and that more immediate reinforcer because like it means so much more to us. That reinforcer is way more valuable to us than it is to you. Um, so I think those, those, those different, motivating, different, the functions yeah. are like the MOs are, the MOs are huge. Um, but we've talked about tattoos quite a bit. Let's move on to our let's ear move on piercings. to piercings because that's something that you do have. You have pierced ears. I actually, and I've had multiple piercings in my ears. See? Actually, before the concert, I like was like sticking in my like second. Tried getting Did it in my third out? hole. No, it went in. But also, like you shouldn't be re-piercing with like an old like cruddy no. earring. No. Like you should use a needle. See, you know, I'm like I had my belly button done. That was oh like, yeah, I, that was cultural selectionism. I had to fit in with the cool girls. So. I got my I got my belly button done. And that's not a functional piercing at all. Um, it was definitely pop culture. And it could have gone with like some framing when we talked about like relational frame theory, some framing of like what it was to be um, popular, what it was like to have some celebrity influence, what it was like to be cool or sexy. Hanging like, out of your Hollister top. I know. But think about how unfunctional that piercing is. Because like now that I've had a kid, I don't know about yours, but like my belly shows. button piercing looks ugly especially after like stretching out my stomach and carrying my child like where that hole is is just like a line i don't know yeah, it, it looks does. really ugly i've tried to put a piercing back in it i even had the little plastic piece in when i was pregnant with lorelei and it just like oh it stayed open it stayed open it's still open it just looks hideous it's, it's not sexy anymore. also like I when you them. when you grow up and you're you're like don't have washboard abs anymore it's not the same it's like i mean even still it just like it it has stretched out like i still have some abs there but like just the belly button piercing itself it's just like not it just doesn't look the same i had my tongue pierced interesting what and i had my lips here i that. my eyebrow pierced the tongue yeah definitely attention see you ever get like vibrating tongue rings you for sure would have no oh my lord I that is so like a you thing. Maybe like, maybe that you should get that with have written the X rated ma. <laughs> so that was like you would like talk about those. No, I never had that, but it was definitely like I was in high school. And oh, were you like one of those girls who like chewed it all the time with their teeth in the front? Yes, yeah. and I always pull it out like. <laughs> I'm sure everybody. I think sometimes like piercings are functional, where like, especially in some culture, like my my well now they're gauges but but my first hole was pierced when i was three months old my dad was single dadding and you know just went for it and i I think back then yeah back then it was differentiating between girls or or females and males Mm -hmm. right the little baby girls would have their ears pierced and the males wouldn't um and that was a thing for a while but then over time those sds and s deltas got like blurred because I know my cousins who are like younger than me. Mm-hmm. Um, my aunt got his ears pierced at a very young age, and it was both, just like a like a girl, but he's a boy. So like, yeah. Um, over time, it's I changed. think yeah, those SDs and L- S deltas have gotten Kobe's really blurry. No, I pierced Lorelai's ears, yeah. but there's like there's a lot of debate about that too, right? Free will versus can they make can they have can they make that choice themselves? A sense. Yeah. I mean, the only body mod I got him was circumcised. Ow. I mean, like yes. more like that's a functional that body mod. Yeah, he didn't have the choice. Maybe he wanted the little. Oh no! But if he wanted to culturally fit into the tribe, yeah, that is the true. Jewish. Like, you want to be in the tribe? Wanna you want to fit in? in? Yeah, I'm just fit saying. in or get out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> clean it well. Clean it well. There are some piercings that also have um, some negative reinforcement components, um, and. Oh, so. I know the tragus. Yes, oh, apparently for my, I had that yeah. done. Yeah, apparently that alleviates migraines. Oh, I no. had that do you, done. Do you feel no. like it made it better? No, I feel like I got in trouble like right after doing it, and I like literally had to have like a medic take it out. What? Because I got in trouble for doing it on like a teen trip. Like literally, oh. I was like so proud that I went through the crunch and everything, and then it was like, "You're not allowed to do that on the trip. We're gonna have to take it out." I was like, "Come on." Everyone goes to Israel when they're younger and, like, gets a piercing because, like, you don't have to be mm-hmm. 18 or whatever. So, so, so you had someone do it that wasn't trained? No, I went to a piercing shop there. Like, oh, I was saying okay. you didn't have to be 18. But then, like, 
the trip had like a medic they had rules that like yeah. after and they like took it out and i was like come on it's already done like <laughs> and so it wasn't long enough but then i got it redone it. i got it redone this is liat so she likes to beg for forgiveness instead of ask for permission that's yeah solid. and it was like some like little bitch counselor right on the trip who like heard and like told me about it and i was like i thought we were friends miriam Ooh, miriam, oh, miriam. put her out there mm-hmm. um so yeah like sometimes uh engaging in that behavior will relieve you from a feeling now i want to get into like this framing thing yeah right? because only when i'm scrolling tiktok <laughs> and i see lip fillers on people there's social i influence. am like boop, boop, boop. like i want it if on I just... tiktok or on me <laughs> fa um anyone i like i when i look in the mirror like i don't want them but if i see someone that has it i'm like i want to fit in it's cool they look sexy their lips are full i want that casey wants whatever literally so for those of you guys who don't know, I have scleroderma, which is a condition of tightening of the skin. So, like, your mouth is essentially, like, always getting smaller. And so, like, they they actually have things, which are for functional purposes, of putting filler in your lips to, like, keep them, uh, like, I guess, stretched out to have something filling it in so that they don't tighten so much. Because you want to be able to, like, always, like, open your mouth fully and whether it's, like, for a dental procedure or whatever. Or eating. Eating. Yeah. So, I, like, get it done. I'm like, I go to this like scleroderma specialist dermatologist and Casey before this, by the way, she had got fillers before and like had like a nightmare story and like looked like she legit got like, oh my God, it was like bumpy labia lips on her face. (laughs) (laughs) She had to get them taken out. She's like, I will never do that again. I had to have them dissolved. They were so bad. And and you had like like, those bumps in it. Bumps everywhere. I was like, it was so bad. (laughs) And they hurt. She's like, I will never do that again. She was in like agony. (laughs) <laughs> then I go get this from, like, the dermatologist. She's like, you could do this. Like, keep this face. You could see this is, like, literally three vials. I still, like, don't even have a lip in place. <laughs> um, so, obviously, the skin is tightening. But hopefully, we could keep some space in there. But Casey, like, here's that I do it. Sure yeah, enough. I saw that you did it, too. I mean, your lips looked big. They did? Yes. And I was like, oh, they don't even look good. <laughs> yeah, she's like, why'd you do that? It looks like you do not need to do anymore. The next thing. I went and got it. <laughs> Casey comes in. And I lied too. I was like, no, no, I got I, one I go, vial. No, said, no, I go, they only put the leftover stuff that they didn't use in my forehead. And you're like, they don't bullshit. Botox your lips, bitch. You go, bullshit, you got a full vial. And I'm like, in my head, like, yeah. And then Casey, by the way, when she lies, she leans in harder on the lie. <laughs> like in class last night, what was the point of that lie? Which one? You're like, there was, She's, which there one? There was all the writing on the uh, bottom of. It was like, you're handwriting to a T, like curled and like. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I think I don't remember writing that. And you're like, no, you wrote it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I'm telling you, it's not my handwriting. Like I don't remember my use like that. It's you. And she's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, like it was like a dumb lie. Like <laughs> it wasn't. Not, but in that moment, you thought I you were believe... getting called out. You also no, thought you were getting called no. out. No, I believe that you wrote it. Like until oh, no, I man. looked further, and I was like, I had to erase like the good notes, and I'm like. It's different than the other. But in that moment, I'm like, why would I have added that in? I don't do good notes. So I really believed for a few minutes when I was saying that, that you wrote it. Okay, guys, it was a stupid fight. (laughs) (laughs) You too. (laughs) Guys, I also like my fan isn't working. So I'm going to fan myself with my finger. (laughs) Don't worry, we're almost there. So yeah, this brings us just the fillers, Botox, um, Botox. I'm a big fan of Botox. I am too. Sorry, guys. But I like, stick to my nose. Lift your forehead. I mean, you have perfect skin. Yeah, dude. She literally looks like Alicia Keys. Like when I raise my forehead, even with literally 50 units, I'm already back to having. Do you wear sunscreen? Yes, every day. Casey. Uh, yeah, I totally do. Leaning into the lie. Oh. <laughs> so no, like I, twice a day too. I, I so wear like, like tanning oil. Uh, when. What happened? Something happened, and I went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, "Yeah, for this scar, put on some sunscreen, it's packed with vitamin E, it reduces scarring." I was like, "Yes," adding this to my skincare routine every day. Um, and so I wear sunscreen. You're very well governed. Yeah, sunscreen morning and night reduces scarring, keeps my skin fresh, um, and I'm an all year round sunscreen wearer. 
So that I'm also like petrified of getting something and dying. So you also said like, I don't, don't want I don't you're a mix. I don't want <laughs> skin cancer. So that's another thing, right? Like protect me from the sun. Antecedent intervention. Exactly. Um. So yeah, sunscreen every day. See, like, and that's funny because like I'm such a rule follower, but when it comes to like sun, my whole life I'm getting better now. But baby oil, I'm gonna be sun. Tan. I want to be ta- tan to me. Why do I equate tan is sexy? Well, because that goes everyone back to does framing. look that, that. No, but not only that. Well, it also is a health perspective. If you like, can't tone it, tan it. <laughs> right, and <laughs> it, I think it also does go back to a little bit of phylogenetic selectionism as well. Yeah, because, yeah. Like I'll tell you times that like I'm in not a healthy place with like my lupus, derma, whatever it is. I'm looking like pale as shit. My lips are blue, white, whatever it is. So it's like sometimes like I'm always like fake it till you make it. Like I'll I. Everyone at the office, I have a spray tan machine. It's one of the benefits of working for Snava. You get free tans whenever you want, or you get to freely give them out. Like, hey, Nicole. I do give them out, which is so funny because, like, I don't know. I, I was very new to the tanning world, obviously. I think it's, like, a sign of help, though. Yeah. Beginning. I'm half black and half white, so, like, I I naturally tan, and in the, the winter I get a little pale. Um, But it it is a thing, like, having a tan, having color – um melatonin yeah not melatonin that's for sleep i mean mel- <laughs> melanin melanin melanin. <laughs> melanin yes we all have melanin uh the amount of melanin varies but it is a thing to look a certain way but I also think. like i grew up with my mom who was like a super tanner right yeah like, she, she, bed. tanning bed she worked like at, outside she worked at a tanning so like a tanning salon when i was like probably 11 and I'd always go into the tanning booth because she'd take us to work sometime. At 11? Oh, yeah. Oh, my case is not healthy. I know. You need to talk about that in therapy, too. <laughs> but so, like, I grew up seeing that. And, like, she'd lay out on her lawn chair in the backyard in yeah, the hot see, sun yeah. with baby oil. And it's like... A- I mean, I used to, like, lay out with baby oil back when. Did you? Like, you put it on, like, your leg. Mom's like, you not put it on your face. You put your sort of sunscreen on your face. But if you put it on your leg, blah, blah, blah. I mean, as a kid, like, yeah, you just want to get tanned. That's like a weird cultural thing. Like, how dare I go on vacation and come back whiter, which I do because I could only, with lupus, you can't be in the sun. Oh, that was so I weird. spray tan yeah. before any vacation now, yeah. and then I come back, like, way whiter than I went. That's a stimulus equivalent, spray tan versus actual tan. If you do it well. Yeah. If you do it well. You're you're really good at spray tanning. Martha, she could hear us downstairs. She <laughs> made me look like I, like... <laughs> went like coal mining <laughs> well, you know, I'm like i did it so i don't have to do it again i'm always down to learn a new Write yourself skill. Out. so like if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it well i feel like i should actually ask the automobile painting shop next door to start spraying me they probably like slay and like put me like I know. curves in the right hands and the they, they actually are very good contour. so they might like they like matt spray cars you next up. to the business next door i they, know when i told matt that i got spray tanned at the office like they saw your boobs I'm like, yes. Like, she, he's like, you saw Leoth's boobs? I'm like, I've seen her boobs like, We've 4, seen everything. We've seen it a thousand times. seen everything. But uh, there's funny because I, I follow this other, they're called Cat and Nat. I don't know if you ever watched them. No. They're these two best friends. They like remind, they're from Canada. They, I've gone to their show live. Like they do a full stand up. It's hilarious. And they just posted something like what type of friends they are. And like, we actually have never seen each other naked. And it Whoa. made me, I was like, are they even friends? I know. I'm like, what? Like, what do you do when Cat you're like, getting Nat's ready? Friends. It's Kimsey and Leah. <laughs> but their names rhyme, so we have to like figure it out. Kissy. <laughs> Joel, I was trying to make it rhyme in the spot. But okay, I think we covered a lot of we did. I think that today was really good. This is like I just want to touch on plastic surgery a little bit. Oh shit, yeah. Okay. Cause different functions of plastic surgery, obviously. Mm-hmm. I think it all goes back to framing and like celebrity influence and like models and like what's hot, what's not. Um, but there are some, again, negative reinforcement plastic surgeries like rhinoplasties help mm-hmm. you breathe better. If that's Breast why you're getting reduction. It. Right. If that's why you're getting it. Right. But then there's also like the idea of looking younger and healthy. So going back to what you said about like selectionism, getting a, getting a mate phylogeny survival of the fittest there's like this idea of like when you think of youth yeah. you think like fun sexy boobs being, what you looked like when you were boobs being above your belly button yeah that elasticity yeah the other day when i was getting spray tan and you were like you have to lift your boobs i'm like 
Uh, I'm getting old. Welcome to the club, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't have kids, so I'm like, this no. should be perfect. The consequences from that stuff, though, you get, like, improved self-confidence. Yeah. There's, like, something in that that just, like, makes you feel hot. Mm-hmm. Like, I am young again. And you feel a little bit in control. Like, if there's something that you were, like, yeah. always insecure about. It's so interesting because, like... But genetics don't lie. I'll just say that. Mm-hmm. You'll pass that on to someone else. That beak will be back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, like, of like, a few families that, like, the mom had it, the grandmother, mm-hmm. the... Because when you think about it, like, when you get plastic surgery, that mm-hmm. doesn't change the genetic No, of component. course not. So, like... Like when Kobe was Mom born with all ten, when Kobe was born with all ten fingers, I was like, "Yes, yeah, we're back, baby, we're <laughs> back in the game." Okay, I beat that selection as well. Oh my god! <laughs> no, literally, I promise you, when he was born, especially being born at thirty-one weeks, I was like, the first thing I did when I saw him, I like counted all. Do his you fingers. have all your fingers and toes? So I was like, like I was like, we're back, you're... we're back on board, baby. <laughs> okay. No, but like when mom has when mom has the nose job and then the daughter has the nose job, like. You're gonna have to keep having the nose job because until one day you're like genetics. Genetics are gonna say that that's your nose. That's the nose that you're passing on. Yep. You know. Interesting because even just looking, thinking of genetics, like so, mom, dad, right? So my dad's side of the family looks a certain way. My mom's side looks a certain way, and my sister totally looks like my mom's side, and I look like my dad's side. Every part of our body. My butt, like I have are a big you butt. Sure? My sister has a flat butt. Oh, you um, said that. What? You have the same dad. <laughs> <laughs> and she I didn't mean to say, are, are you sure? sure? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> oh my, yeah, I am 100%. I thought you were going to say we look totally different. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, honestly, based on what you've been telling me lately, like, are we sure about anything? Like, no, I'm sure. Is your that. name truly Casey? <laughs> oh, no. um, but we look like she has the Ramsell jeans. I have the McDaniel jeans. <laughs> I have, like, the rounder face, the cheek, like, higher, like, when I smile, like, we just look very different. She has a different nose than I do. Um, I don't know, just genetics are interesting. Yeah, totally. I just want to end with, like, what is beauty? Because body modification just, like, changes the way you appear Mm -hmm. on the outside. Um, It changes, like, how you identify yourself. For me, for sure, I like to be unique. I like to be different. Um, I like to be hot, right? So, like... (laughs) <laughs> for me beauty isn't defined by social media or the model i'll tell you the one that. thing that i think that beauty could be across the board and What's i'll tell that? you what that is and i think and obviously you guys tell me if it's i guess it still is subjective but to me there's nothing hotter than confidence yes so like legit like own even it. if like you have the saggiest balls like walk around with confidence like i'll believe they're meant to be like that like like literally i'm telling you I, not, gold. no and it's a huge lesson because when i lost my fingers at first and they were like in bandages i told everyone like the person checking me out at the grocery store like yeah because i thought they're like all looking like i'm be like oh yeah it was like a tour but the doctors made a mistake blah blah, blah. like this person like working out like and they're like, they do like not care. give a shit or like <laughs> see like what was happening when i'm like using apple pay with my phone against the thing like no fingers involved and then at a certain point I realized, like, dude, I either make these badass about me or I make it, like, poor girl. Like and it's, victim, like, yeah. that's what, the, like, I do think across the board, whether people realize it or not. Like, so if it's something you need that's going to help you have that confidence, confidence, do it. Yeah. If it's, like, if it's for, remember, like, doing it for you, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I think, that honestly, confidence is sexy. Like, no matter who you are. I mean, I will tell you. Like, I'm married, but now I'm in Texas, and my husband's in New Hampshire, and I don't know the last time I've been hit on, right? Like, it's like oh, a- no one hits on me. Except I was walking into my building yesterday, Dude, and this I love sexy, when somebody hits on this me. sexy man got out of his car. Sexy black man, you guys know I love a sexy black man. <laughs> Even I'm married to, like, the whitest ginger ever. Literally the opposite of melatonin. <laughs> Um, melatonin. I'm kidding. Melatonin. I'm kidding. Yep. I obviously I know. I called her out on <laughs> but it. But he got out of his car and I, no joke was like, like did this like whistle and I was like, oh, he must, be, he must be doing it to someone else. And I look back and he's smiling and he's like, and I was like, <laughs> and I didn't have Mabel with me, so it definitely wasn't her. Casey, it. that confidence. I'm telling you, little things like that. Like, oh yeah. And being married, like, as secure as it is yeah. and as, like, it gets safe routine. as it is, 
I love when somebody still hits on me. Yeah. Because I like, you know it. what? I still got it. Yes. I, I'm yes. Still swaggy. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying, though, that. that I'm talking about the internal confidence that you like that you have that like, you know, I mean, you it own does help it. Else, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, confidence but it helps with a little bit of like we always recruit reinforcement. It helps when you have a little bit of. Yeah, totally. Outside. Love and I leave love a five star review. Down. Love you, mean it. <laughs> yeah, leave an epic five star review. <laughs> so, I mean, then he... Yep. And All then right. I'm like this. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> I think it makes people want you more. <laughs> it does. I had a guy tell me one time. It's like an SD for hitting on someone. Going out. He was like, uh-huh. he pointed to his, which didn't have a ring. And he was just kind of like shrugging. And I was like, ooh, time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, thank you. Uh-huh. So yeah, he's like, sometimes they're like. Indicating? Yeah. Because I was like this, you know, like, ring. Ding, ding, ding. And he's like, like tap, no ring. ring. Oh, you like literally did that? Yeah. I've done that before. Because at like, a people, restaurant, like people at a bar. hit on you and like keep trying to hit on you. I did on the, I did the on the air. Um, I was flying home, and it should be again a sexy black guy. I think there's <laughs> ah! sitting next to me, and he. I woke up. I was sleeping, and he's like, "Hi, Sleeping Beauty." Like, well, like, and he was like, "Whatever." And um, no shot. You were like, you were like, no, no, I wasn't. No, I actually I I, No, I, I actually, he, I didn't do this, but I was talking with my hands like I always do. Yeah, like flash. And flash. he was like. Got gotcha. It. And I was like, okay. And I put my headphones back in. Okay. No, but I, I legit that. pointed because like we were across the room and he was like cat calling and I was with a group of girls. So we didn't know who he was talking to. So we're like all pointing and finally it landed <laughs> on me. And I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, like nodding. And I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. And he's like, I don't have one. So what's up? Yeah. Like, I and don't I'm care. like, this should be an SD, bro. This is a group. I mean, S- Delta. Delta. S Delta. No SD. This is an <laughs> interdependent group contingency. We both have to not have one. So, oh. bam. Okay. Bring it, ending it on a note. You know me, anyway. the behavioral robot coming in hot. Did you write them all down? No, I have them all in here. But, guys, that's all we have for you today. I think we wrapped this one up. Great one. Yeah. yeah. Wrap it up. It's perfect. One hour. Do what makes you confident. Yep. Rock out with a confident cock out, you know? There you go. All right. E-E-E. <laughs> Big energy. D. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. You know where you could find us. You could find us on Instagram at Behavior Riches Podcast, on Facebook at Behavior Riches Podcast, our website, behaviorbitches.com. Always reach out with a topic, a cool guest. If you're a cool guest, if you have a topic, or if you want to send us love. But you could also always leave us love on the Apple Podcast. Yeah. App. Do. we live for five star reviews please you don't want me to have to write them anymore for myself sad <laughs> so sad all right go check us out leave us love thanks for coming on today nicole we'll be back for more office talk yeah. and as always love ya mean it Mwah. <laughs>